Hello everyone, welcome back to Wolfpack Wednesday number three. So today's gonna be a lightning fast rundown of my top down setup, mostly because um, I do have two weddings I need to prep for tomorrow and the day after. And then I also have a working lifestyle shoot, which I haven't learned just yet, but we will worry about those later. I am not for any reason missing a Wolfpack Wednesday. But real quick, before I show you this top down camera setup, I did wanna gauge your overall interest in this. And that is a question that I asked um, everyone yesterday as well. And that is, what are your thoughts on having a, on me teaching a photography slash filmmaking course specifically for board games and like content creation, pricing rates, pretty much the whole thing from beginner all the way to professional level. I wanna know what your interest is for that because honestly, these videos tank on my channel. They don't do well. And you know, I don't do them for stats. I do them literally to like help out everybody. But if I were to have a course, not only would it give back to the channel a ton, it would give me a lot more leeway to like spend time and do very, very focused, laser focused videos and dive into like the nuances of every single step of the process. So that's something that I think would help both me and you. And it's just something that I, want to gauge your interest in and see how you all feel. So let me know how you all feel about that down in the comments below. And without further ado, let's go and dive into the top-down camera setup, which by the way, this is going to be a more advanced setup for board game videos. And overall, even if you're not looking to upgrade your setup to this point, at least you'll know the different parts and what you can adjust depending on whatever you're looking for, whether it's like casual videos on Instagram or just whatever you need a top-down setup for, for filming board games, okay? so. The first thing that you need is a C-stand. A C-stand is just a metal pole. That's what you see here. Now, the C-stand is not does not come by itself. There are several different parts in a C-stand. First off, let's bring you over here. So first off is the base of the C-stand. I'll link my wheels, but honestly, they're really, really expensive. You don't need wheels. I just have wheels because I'm always moving them around to different sets and stuff. So wheels make it convenient for everybody that uses this and helps me out with it. So first off is the base that you'll need for the C-stand. And then this base has one main body. This main body is the important part because when you unlock this, you can raise it. Ugh, that's so heavy. <laughs> you can raise it to wherever you want, or you can also lower it to wherever you want. And then you also notice here that there is this giant sandbag. You will definitely need a sandbag because if you're gonna spend thousands, potentially thousands of dollars on a camera and a lens and a microphone, the worst thing that you want to happen, me by the way, the worst thing that you want to happen is to have all that fall on the floor instead of spending a couple hundred dollars on a C-stand. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's good to invest in something like this that is sturdy and reliable and to have a sandbag to balance out the counterweight when you put all the other stuff, your camera, then your, all your gear and equipment on this side. So you have the base, you have the C-stand, you have the sandbag. So there's a hook. And if we follow this line all the way down, this is also a separate part that is not the C-stand. So that top is a boom pole. This boom pole is separate, but what's really nice is that if you have a long table, it can extend as far as you want because sometimes if you have a long table, the boom arm won't be long enough. So if you have an extendable boom arm, it can go to however much you want. And of course you want it to be, um, to fit at the center of the table. Now you'll also notice that there is this wire running all the way down the C-stand. This is called an XLR cable. It is for your microphone or your audio setup. And for me, I have this connected to something called the Zoom H5N. This is a recorder. So the microphone will be connected with this cable. The cable goes into this recorder. And then this recorder also needs a external battery, which I have this connected to here. It's kind of janky, I know. And then what I'm also experimenting around with is something that's super important. And that is a sound tray. So this is supposed to fit into the C-stand and have it suspend just like that. That way you can put a bunch of accessories on here. But you'll notice here that it is way too small. And also you notice that this diameter does not fit the C-stand at all. So I definitely need to get a bigger one, but just so you know, this is called a sound tray. Trust me, I've been looking for this for ages because beforehand we were just duct taping all of this to the pole, which is not smart and not safe for your gear. But we've been doing that for Benton West and we've also been doing that for Fire and Ice. So you need to stop that and get a designated audio tray. Okay, now the last part of the setup is where your camera is gonna go. So you see how this XLR cable is connected to the microphone. In case you're interested, this is the microphone that I use. It is a hypercardioid microphone. Basically makes your sound sound really good. But that microphone is also suspended with a microphone holder. And then 
this right here that's connected to the top of the boom arm, this piece alone is called a grip head. So this grip head, it gets inserted here and it'll lock with that. And then there are two sides of this. There is a spigot right here. This spigot is what holds the microphone holder, which holds the microphone. So you have the microphone inside a microphone holder with a spigot attached to it. And then that spigot is being clamped to the grip head. On the other side of the grip head is another spigot in order for you to have a camera ball head. And then this is where you would have the camera because this comes with a camera plate. So all you do is attach the camera uh, with the plate onto here and then you can rotate it because it is a ball head and then adjust it so that way you have a top down shot that looks just like this. I forgot to mention that most camera setups will either show you a setup with just a microphone or just the camera, or they'll have like two different C stands or two different tripods. So this is how you achieve a top-down setup with a camera and a microphone with just one uh, holder that holds both of them. So again, you do not need all of these things unless you're looking to have professional level equipment. I just wanted to show you the bits and pieces so at least you know which parts to piece together to suit your needs. And again, if enough people are interested in me making a course about this, then I would easily buy like beginner level stuff that clamps to the table, intermediate level stuff, and then leading up all the way to professional level stuff. So yeah, let me know what y'all think. I hope this helped in some way for your top-down setups. It's been my most frequent question ever since I started this series, and I'm glad we are continuing it on for episode three. If you made it here to the very, very end, comment upgrade, so I know you made it here. Appreciate you so much. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all for episode four.